Detroit Hot Radio, WDHR, the heart and soul of Detroit music. Stay tuned for Detroit Soul with your host, Lanell Baker. Right here on DetroitHotRadio.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Detroit Soul, Detroit Hot Radio's premier talk show. It's your girl, Linnell, and I'm here with Lynn Roundtree. Hey, how are you? Hey, Lynn. Lynn is a soul and jazz trumpet player. He's a music producer and a composer. Lynn has recorded five solo albums. Actually, six. Okay, I'm off. So no, that's, that's all right. Lynn, I know you from back in the day before you had any albums. Tell us how all of this became about. I know you've always been an awesome musician. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you got to where you are right now because you're killing them. It's a long process and it certainly is a progression. Of course, I started out playing clubs around Detroit playing at a place called Floods Bar and Grill and the Key Club, getting myself immersed in the R&B scene because there weren't a whole lot of opportunities for a trumpet player to play R&B music. We were always either band trumpet section musicians or in some sort of big band or something like that. So all the soloist opportunities went to the saxophone players, and the singers, and the guitars. As far as I was concerned, that's why I decided to start my own band. Then I could do what I wanted to do. So I got a singer geared myself towards R&B and then started playing around town, you know, getting a name for myself. The group was called Up Close. Everybody used to ask me, well, man, we love what you do. You made us feel good. Do you have a CD? And I said, well, no, I don't have a CD. And after everybody kept asking me, well, do you have a CD? Do you have a CD? I said, well, maybe I should make a CD because I can make a little bit of extra money after the gig. Went in the studio, made a CD. I met some great producers, the great Scott. I met two premier, world premier producers, one named Billy Meadows, the other named Dana Davis. These guys had a track record of success. I wasn't starstruck because I really didn't know who they were. I ended up just, you know, hey, listen to my songs. And uh, they said, yeah, we we hear something in you. We know where you're going. You know, how about we produce you? And so they produced me. And, and you know, one thing led to another. They took all the songs that I already written. They redid them. And they produced them. And out came Groove Tree, my first CD. My man, Mr. Tim Bowman, who's also a Detroiter, graced my CD with uh, my first single, For Your Love. And he happened to be one of the hottest guitarists out at that time, so that's when program directors started to open up my single because they said, "Who's the Tim Bowman? Who is this Lynn Roundtree?" They opened it up and they loved what they heard, and the rest is history. That started my career in, in recorded music, certainly in the smooth jazz, contemporary jazz realm. I didn't, really didn't know what I'd had. It was all pure. I didn't. I wasn't going for any marketing. I was going for any commercial. Writing what I thought sounded good. Writing what I felt, and uh, it was embraced around the country. That started me on this path. Wonderful. What an awesome path it has been. You're doing music, you're traveling all over the world. I was looking at some of your stuff on YouTube and you were all the way in Uganda. Yes. Oh, that was a great trip. I cherish that memory forever. Just being able to go back to the motherland where it all began and play for people who were so appreciative of the music. I think it was the largest crowd I've ever played in my life. I was there with myself and Shaquem Joyner. The headliner was Maxi Priest. Wow, and, uh, that's big time. He was like a god over there. He really <laughs> loved his music. It was such a great, great experience. We were over there for about six days. Uh, not only did we play the show, but we were over there just visiting the country, uh, the good and the not-so-good parts of the country, uh, so we could get an appreciation of things over there. It's all levels of, of people over there, rich people, beautiful people, and there's some poverty. For the most part, you could be somewhere in America with the technology and with the cars and the different things. The misrepresentation sometimes that you see uh, on TV of Africa is blatant when you get over there. And they speak English over in Uganda. That's their number one language. I mean, it's just a beautiful place and a beautiful experience that I'll cherish. It. And I definitely want to go back. Smooth Jazz is about 20 years behind where we are right now in Smooth Jazz. They're just discovering it right now. and They're just getting some of us over there. Uh, to start playing the music, starting to get these radio stations, blue jazz radio stations starting to pop up. So I look forward to getting back over there. And I'm sure they're looking forward to having you come back over there. You're doing quite well. You're topping the Billboard chart. You just got a lot going on. You were in the top 50 for jazz albums. Just absolutely amazing. Then you ended up with a role in Sparkle. 
Uh, with Jordan Sparks and CeeLo mm-hmm. Green and Green. Major Motion Pictures. So that was mm-hmm. pretty awesome. Tell us a little bit about that and how that came about. Interestingly, again, you always remember this movie because of Whitney Houston's last movie that she ever did. It came about being in the circle of musicians here in Detroit. Uh, this great musician named Kern Brantley, who uh, was music director for Lady Gaga and all over the place. And he was charged with uh, being a music director because the directors for Sparkle wanted to make a movie. They were tired of seeing movies, music movies with actors who weren't musicians. They wanted more realism on stage in the scenes. So they yeah. said, we're going to cast mu- real musicians because they know how to hold the instruments and how to play and how to dance while they have the instruments and it looks real. That's what we want to get. And so there was a trial and uh, we all tried out. We had to, you know, play a song and dance at the same time. You know, I learned all of that from University of Florida A&M okay. marching band. That's all we did was perform, dance and play. That's how it's marching band too. Yeah. Exactly. That experience came in very handy. It's a balance, playing musical, but also performing and smiling and having good optics for everybody. So that's what they said, and that's how I was chosen. started out just being some extras, but we gravitated towards actual parts. I guess in the movie business, you're either an extra or you're you're considered an actor, you have a role, and it puts you at another level. When you first started filming, we weren't allowed to say anything to any of the leads proactively. They could say something to us, but we weren't allowed to say anything. But by the time they finished watching us dance and coming up with these <laughs> dance steps and killing it on stage with the optics, they said, look, you guys, we're, we're going to put you at a different level. You can eat with the headliners, awesome. and you can, with the stars, and, and you can talk. You're at a different scale than everybody else. So that was just the greatest feeling, just to be up there. Yeah, you really are now. <laughs> yeah, now I don't consider myself that because I consider myself just laying with a trumpet. You know, I always keep that attitude because it keeps me humble and it keeps me grateful for where I am. I don't want to ever get too complacent. And you've always been humble, but you know you're big time now. Really <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I, you can say that. I appreciate it. I'll receive it. Ladies and gentlemen, why don't we listen to This Time Around by Lynn Roundtree. And we'll be right back after this. Right here on DetroitHotRadio.com. Hi, this is Martha Reeves. And wherever I'm performing, I listen to Detroit Hot Radio. It's all the music that we all love. Detroit Hot Radio.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to This Time Around by Lynn Roundtree, native of Detroit, Michigan, a truly amazing jazz artist. His songs have been topping the charts. Lynn, where do you want to go from here? You have dabbled in production, being in a movie. What would you like to accomplish next? I still have a long way to go in the business and the genre and, and even expanding in the genre because my roots are in R&B, rhythm, blues, music, and I love working with vocalists. You'll see throughout all of my projects, uh, I've got vocal tunes on all my projects. In fact, my third album, Soul Tree, the Soul Jazz Experience, I was half and half. I had six instrumental tunes, six vocal tunes. I've always kept that as a part of, of what I do. And um, so I envision myself working more with uh, more R&B artists, kind of bringing back that Neil. So I don't think we maximized or got enough out of the Neil Soul era. It kind of came and, and kind of dissipated sooner than I thought it had, should have. So I'm going to kind of re- re- revive that as well. Um, because there's a lot of great, great soul, neo-soul artists that just never got their just due. Uh, and now with, with the platform that I have in Smooth Jazz, it's a perfect combination. That's where I want to go. Also, I want to just continue to grow, expand the music. We're going through an interesting time now. Some people are upset about the lack of outlets for Smooth Jazz. Some of the stations started to disappear, but I'm so grateful for outfits like yours, organizations like yours that continue to push and expose us uh, to your listeners and your listening audience and, and give us the platform to share our music, you know, I mean, because we're making the music, but, you know, that's not enough. Somebody's got to be able to hear it uh, so that they can appreciate it. And uh, that's why conduits like yours is so, so important. And I appreciate you. So it's it's mutual. So, you know, I just want to continue to grow the music. I want to I want to get it to a point where it was uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, the premier music, you know, you go into, into the terrestrial markets and smooth jazz was, uh, number two, three, even one in, in arbitrary rating in some markets. So it was a very, very powerful uh, entity. And the people haven't gone anywhere. Uh, I think the, the industry didn't understand how to evolve, per se. But I think the, it's wide open now. So I see where challenges, or some people see challenges, uh, I see opportunity. Absolutely. I'll tell you, there's nothing I'd rather listen to on a warm summer day out on the boat or something than some smooth jazz. You're really trying to relax and get into your groove. There's nothing like it. It's an amazing genre of music. Are there any artists that you aspire to work with that you haven't had a chance to work with yet? Yeah, so many artists. I started to say earlier, you know, working with the R&B artists like people like Lettucey, people like LMI and her, people like that. I want to somehow be able to fuse and infuse our music into that type of music, things that they're doing and the way that they're presenting their music. Uh, that whole type of vibe is, is where I want to go. Jill Scott is somebody I love, want to work with. Erica Badu is somebody I love, want to work with. We're all cut from the same cloth, came up in the same time frame. You know, I was starting my band and Jill was hot, you know, so I did all, all of Jill's songs. You know, I was the cover band that did the J-Song. So There's a Lynn Rouch, the Jill Scott band or the, Eric about do bang because he's doing the Neil. So that's my heart. Also, what my heart always has been. Or so I was doing the 80s music, but uh, Lynn is, is is doing that, and I want to solidify that by actually working with some of these people. Well, I can see that coming. I can see that on the horizon. I think you can definitely make that possible. You definitely have the connection to do that. What do you have on the horizon, or is it a secret, or is there something that you can fill our listeners <laughs> in on? <laughs> with social media, there's not many secrets that we have. I think the great thing about social media is you can share your journey with people. If people can see you in your journey and see you acting silly, you know, hear about some of your ups, some of your challenges, it makes the music that you play, that they listen to, that you make mean that much more. I enjoy that. So as far as any anything on the horizon, a lot of stuff, I'm working with a lot of different people. Actually, there is something on the horizon. Uh, I, I'm not going to say it yet, but I'm working with a great vocalist. Uh, she's very, very popular in the uh, in the smooth jazz around new vocalist. Oh, I got on, a chance. I got a chance to work with her. <laughs> I got a chance to finally go on, on different shows. I've been on this show. She was on that show. I was on this show. She was on that show. We finally linked up at two shows last year. Uh, okay. But uh, we're working. So you put that together. We're working on something that's hot and that's fire. I think it's going to be greatly, greatly received. Uh, that's on the next project. I'm working on an R&B project as well for my label, Trippin' and Rhythm Records. That's going to be an EP of sorts to the, uh, the support of some artists like Kanye Doss, my little sister wow. Jessica Cholia, who's a great vocalist that uh, I'm working with now. I, actually, I have a couple bands. I've got a band that's R&B fused. I work with her. I also, a great friend of mine named Beth. She's an awesome vocalist. I took her to Dubai 
just uh, a year and a half ago to the Dubai Jazz Fest, and uh, she rocked it out wow. with me. Uh, yeah, so, you know, it's on the horizon, and I'm working with some, some great artists. Skinny Hightower and I have a few songs that we're cranking out together. Um, you know, I record, recorded in the past with Julian Vaughn, and, and he and I are, are doing some things together. So there's a lot of collabs on the horizon. Wow. We can't wait to hear them. Right now, we're going to listen to Pass the Groove with Lynn Roundtree, and we'll be right back after this. Here's a word from one of our sponsors. If you're in the local Detroit listening area and you need an income earning opportunity, the following information may be for you. Would you get a pen and pencil at this time? Because at the end of the announcement, a phone number will be given. A local Detroit company is working on a money-making opportunity. They are dedicated to helping individuals, families, and neighborhoods by providing an economic opportunity to persons with a good work ethic. This company is a privately held family corporation with a proven track record of success for over 55 years. They just announced an income opportunity that you can take advantage of immediately, part-time or full-time. Interested parties should call 248-470-2085. Ask for Al and tell them you heard it on Detroit Hot Radio. Don't miss out on this great opportunity. Be sure to call 248 248- 470-2085. Again, that number is 248-470-2085. Thank you. From the east side to the west side and throughout the world, this is a Detroit original, Detroit Hot Radio.
back, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to Pass the Groove with Lynn Roundtree. We are interviewing the fabulous Lynn Roundtree. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Lynn, how do people follow you? I know you've got your social media presence. Tell our listeners how they can follow your music, how they can be on your fan page, sure. and, you know, keep up with what's going on with you. They can get to everything Lynn Roundtree by just simply going to www.lynnroundtreemusic.com. Lynn, L-I-N, Roundtree with no D, R-O-U-N-T-R-E-E, music.com. And from there, they connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, They can sign up for my newsletter, which I send out quarterly, or if there's something special, I'll send a special newsletter out. Uh, Also, you can, you know, go back and get one of them. I've got six albums to date. You can... Uh, there's links to download all of the albums or get hard copies. Uh, you can pull pictures off for those promoters that are that are bringing me into the, their their uh, their venues. Um, so we, it's a one stop shop at, at lynnroundtreemusic dot com. That's awesome. Are you going out on tour soon? Will you be coming to visit us anytime? I certainly hope so. No, I did one of those uh, smooth summer nights. I did that, and I, I had to go cross country to uh, to do the Jacksonville Jazz Fest. So yeah, we're in the early stages, and I think what's going on is uh, a lot of the festivals, a lot of the promoters are, are pulling their lists together for their artists and their lineups, putting their lineups together. So uh, it's about this time where I start to get um, uh, a lot of the inquiries. I've already got about 12 dates already set. Um, I'm going to be out west a few times, Sacramento uh, in March, uh, be back in Sacramento in September, or Stockton, California, September, San Diego, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, as close to Vegas as I'll be, um, you know, we're getting some inquiries out of uh, out of Denver. We're getting some uh, good stuff on the East Coast, up and down the East Coast. So um, it's it's coming around, and it, it looks like it's going to be a good another good year. Um, this time last year, I didn't have as much uh, already on the books, uh, but I ended up um, with thirty something dates uh, by the by the uh, by the end of summer. So um, it's looking good. Awesome. That is totally awesome. Go and ahead. again, they can, I'm sorry, I'm just going to cut you off. They can always, oh. you can always go to glenrashmusic.com, as I said earlier, and check out my schedule. It's always changing. Uh, so it's evergreen, but, um, you know, and my schedule page will show you exactly where I am and, and you click on it, give you all the details of what I'm, where I am and what I'll be doing. Amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a listen to something more by Lynn Roundtree. And we'll be right back after this. Adult R&B and hip hop with a touch of jazz. Nobody does internet radio like Detroit Hot Radio. This is a Detroit original. Detroit Hot Radio.
You're listening to Something More with Lynn Roundtree. We're still interviewing Mr. Lynn Roundtree. Lynn, tell me, what is your favorite song of all of your songs and that you feel are the closest to your heart? Because every artist has certain pieces that are near and dear to their heart. The first song that I ever wrote in my life, a song called Every Day, and I recorded that on my first CD, and I re-recorded a live version featuring Mike Phillips on my fifth project. It's Every Day, and it's a simple lines to it, a very memorable melody line, um, but I play it at every single show. You will never see uh, a show of Lynn Roundtree unless I'm doing one song on a, on a TV show or something. You'll never see a, a full show of Lynn Roundtree and me not do that song because I always play it because it reminds me from whence I came. And, uh, you know, about six CDs, and that's a little over, you know, close to 70, um, 70 songs that I've written. I've produced another 30, written and produced another 30 for, for different people. I recorded with about 51 different artists on their albums. So I've done a lot of recording, very prolific uh, in, in, in the last 10, 15 years. But uh, I'll say every day is is, is my baby. It's, it's, it's the closest to my sound and what I want everything to sound. I've got a lot of different sounds, but you know, that groove, that feel of that song is uh is something that that's that speaks Lynn Roundtree. That's who Lynn Roundtree is. Wow. I've been blessed to work with a lot of great producers too. Um uh, Nicholas Cole, I've become a producer. I've done some stuff with him, Nate Harrison did some stuff with him on the fourth album, uh, you know, Dana Davis, uh who, you know, worked with me for my you know, and produ- helping me produce my first three albums and, you know, Brandon Williams, um, and of course, Michael Broning, uh, who, you know, helped produce, uh, and I, he actually wrote Past the Groove, my first number one, one single. So yeah, it, uh, I've, I've been blessed to work with a lot of, a lot of great producers as well. All right. What would you like to say to aspiring jazz artists? Earlier in the conversation, you mentioned that the industry is not what it used to be maybe 10 years ago. I don't feel that it's something that will ever die, but uh-huh. it's not getting the, the full recognition that it deserves that may be discouraging to some artists. So mm-hmm. what would you have to say? Certainly you come to a lot of these jazz festivals, you see all these, you know, cane tunes and this jazz festival, jazz festival, and there's thousands and thousands of people, and you're like, wow, there's people, but then, you know, it's just something that doesn't add up because, you know, you're not getting to see them on award shows and, and they're not, you know, rolling in dough. It's just, you know, it's a handful of people. It's like the have and have not. It's a handful of people that are that are doing real well and then everyone's kind of struggling. But but to that, I say you have to keep pushing. You have to keep going. I've seen a lot of artists, and this is the number one thing that artists, when they get discouraged uh, and life hits you, family hits you, finances hit you, the reality, you, 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 you kind of make your own reality, but... You know, what you're living in right now is, if you make the perceptions are reality, your the perception of where you are right now becomes your reality. And if where you are right now is upset, miserable, you're not getting the gigs, you're not getting the presence on radio, then that's your reality. And that becomes what makes you give up. Well, maybe this is not for me. Maybe I should go do this or go do that. Or I've got some financial issues. I've dumped all this money into my career and I've got nothing to show for it. And this person's getting shows, that person. That happens to everybody. Um, it's it's indiscriminate, <laughs> and it's yeah. no one's against you. Or you, you take it very very personal because music is personal. When you sit there and write your music, it's so personal, it's so emotional. You put so much of your heart and soul into your music, and for it not to be recognized or appreciated, or it, it not to be doing what you see other people doing, it can be very discouraging. And, and that same intensity that you use doing the music can be that same weighted depression that you go through uh, with with the lack of success or the rejection. Um, so my number one thing is to keep going. Somebody told me uh, back in the day, they said, look, you know what? Control the things you can control and let everybody else worry about everything else. And the one thing that you can control is the music that you write and the instrument that you play. Continue to get better on your instrument. Continue to write songs. Continue to record by any means necessary. I don't care if you have the finances or don't have the finances. Figure out a way. Make your music. Get it out there. Keep making CDs. That's why my sixth CD is called Stronger Still. It's, it epitomizes my journey um, through through the music and why I've been able to, to stick it out so long uh, through, I mean, through the tr- trials and tribulations. I mean, you have all kinds of issues. Life just comes at you. People are here. People are, are gone. People pass away. And, you know, a lot of different things happen in life that, that's a, that are inevitable. But, you know, you got to just keep going. If that's your passion, if that's what you do, 
I was told somebody is listening to you. You're making music. You think nobody's listening to you. There's somebody that's listening to you. And, you know, when I go to shows and I see kids showing up saying, hey, Lynn, I just wanted to meet you, man. I've been listening to your music. Or, you know, somebody saying, hey, you know, you helped me through a bad time. Or, you know, it's just, it, 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 it just gives you that fuel and it gives you that, 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 what do you call it, validation that you're yeah. doing something, something right. You know, somebody's listening to you. If it's one person, that's why, that's why I take my shows. You know, it's, if one person shows up, if 3,000 people show up, you know, I'm happy to play for whoever is going to sit there and, and watch me play a trumpet because I'm, I'm certainly blessed and I'm going to share that blessing. Yes, yeah, you're definitely blessed. You are a blessing. Your music is truly amazing, and you've never had a show where one person showed up. <laughs> well, well, yeah, three or four people showed up, but, you know, it's just some weather issues and some other things with, with some promoters. <laughs> but, you know, those four people got a great show. I bet they you know? did. I'm so glad they probably took pictures. I did a show. I'm not going to name where it was last year. <laughs> I don't want to set the promoter out, but um, it wasn't that well promoted, um, and... To, to the, this promoters, um, also, there's some dirty stuff going on because in the same city, somebody decided to uh, to throw another smooth jazz show in this on the same day, same uh-huh. night, and they pulled the crown by some you know scurvy means, and so this show ended up being there were literally probably about I'd say 20 people, and the, the place held 600 people, and so uh-huh. you know when you look out in the audience, it looked like nobody there. And we had this stage and this big production and, you know, sound guy and, and speakers and the whole band and everybody's there. And, and you just look out and it's, it looks like two people. And, and and so that's kind of discouraging. But, you know, you, you you remember that these people, one of these people could be your angel, you know, your your angel that's watching over you. Or somebody, one of these people could need you, could be could have cancer or could have something that they just decided to come out. And, and be entertained. So instead of going out there being miserable and giving a half show, I did more. I stayed longer. I went out in the audience and I played personally to every last person out there because you could. It was that many people. But yeah, you know, I, I went out and played to every single person. And I just took that opportunity to, to, to hey, look, I'm going to play. I don't know who these people are, what they, but they came to hear me. I'm going to play. They probably said that was an amazing show, and word of mouth is extremely powerful. I'm certain that that has happened to the best of them, some of the best artists. Things like that do happen, unfortunately, often. Yeah, uh, yeah, and you can't control it. And like you said, some of those people actually showed up in uh, in Los Cabos when I did the Los Cabos Jazz Fest, where there were plenty of people. You know, it was a great, <laughs> huge festival. And those, some of those people said, well, we came down because, you know, we bought tickets and came down because uh, because we saw you. Awesome. You know, and they were out there on the sand, and I just I recognized them. I said, "Wow, you guys came with that, yeah." That has to make you feel good. <laughs> it does, it, and it keeps you going. Okay, it's it's validation. It says it says that you know I don't care who comes out, I'm doing something. Somebody wants to hear me. Somebody enjoys my music. I make somebody feel good with my music. So I'm gonna, I'm going to keep going and keep pushing forward because you know I'm not going to worry about it. Everything else will fall into place. You know what I'm saying? You know, it gets discouraging, but you keep pushing forward. Everything else will fall into place. Absolutely. And you're stronger still. Exactly. And, yeah. We're going <laughs> to keep pushing your music. We're going to keep playing your music right here on Hot Radio. Lynn, it was truly amazing talking to you. We really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Our listeners are really going to enjoy listening to you in rotation. This is all mine. Thank you so much. And any closing remarks for our listeners? I'd just like to say thank you for continuing to listen to radio as a whole, continuing to listen to hot radio, uh, <laughs> great programming that they bring, great people that they get on to uh, to interview and speak speak with you, and uh, just continue to support the music. And, and when, when I come out anywhere close to you guys, just come on out and say, hey, look, you know, I heard you on uh, our radio. I'm following your music, and uh, I just wanted to come out and say hello, and, uh, and that would make me feel really good. So I, I just thank you guys for your love and support, and look forward to seeing each and every one of you real soon. Lynn Roundtree, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. We hope you'll tune in again next week, same place, same time, on www. DetroitHotRadio.com Detroit Hot Radio WDHR The heart and soul of Detroit music
Thank you.